SpaceX's towering super heavy booster, one half of the company's Starship rocket system, briefly roared to life for the first time on Thursday in a full duration of the Starship 33 engine static fire test that will put the behemoth Moon and Mars vehicle closer to its first orbital flight as soon as March. How did the test go, and was it powerful enough to destroy the launch pad? Also, is it ready for an orbital flight, and how did Elon Musk and NASA react? All this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech, where we talk about SpaceX's big milestone of Booster 7 static firing 31 engines. Starship has and is continuing to be a phenomenon. Nearly 300,000 people watched a live stream broadcasted by SpaceX on YouTube. At first, the video feed showed clouds of vapor enveloping the launch stand when propellants started flowing into the rocket and rings of frost forming around the rocket as the tanks filled with ultra-cold propellants. Then the clouds mostly vanished when the fueling was complete. For the brief test, the tanks were not filled to the brim. SpaceX gave the command to light the Raptor engines mounted in a circular configuration on the bottom of the booster. At 4.14 p.m. Eastern, on a video feed provided by SpaceX, the engines roared to life for a few seconds and shut down, kicking up rose clouds above the rocket and prompting masses of birds to flee the area. This is really the most powerful rocket test in history. So let's compare this with other Booster 7 tests. As you can see for the last test, the huge plume of orange fumes immediately expanded into a cloud of brown dust from under the OLM to the top of Mechazilla. Let's imagine a person standing near the launch pad at this point. And after the clouds have settled, only bones would be left. Just kidding, or am I? According to CEO Elon Musk, Super Heavy Booster 7, or B7, ultimately ignited 31 of its 33 Raptor engines. One engine was manually disabled just before the static fire, while the other faulty engine automatically shut down while attempting to ignite. The other 31 Raptors, however, completed a full duration static fire that lasted about 5 seconds. Musk says that even with two engines disabled, those that remained were still enough to reach orbit which is an excellent result, despite the static fire's imperfections. Until now, NASA hasn't given an opinion on the test. The 31 engines that fired together broke a record for the most rocket engines ever ignited on a single rocket, exceeding the 30-engine Soviet N-1 moon rocket that flew on four failed missions from 1969 through 1972. If all 31 engines reached full throttle on Thursday's test, the rocket would have generated more than 15 million pounds of thrust, which is nearly double the thrust of NASA's Saturn V and Space Launch System moon rockets. And Booster 7 emerged from the huge cloud of kicked up dust in one piece, which is something to celebrate as well. An update on Twitter from SpaceX indicated that the test was a success, lasting as long as intended. Now, you're probably worried about the state of Starship's launch pad. So far, SpaceX's Mechazilla, the stool-like orbital launch mount, or OLM, which also survived the test in one piece, held Starship down with 20 clamps to counteract any remaining thrust. From SpaceX's perspective, the fact alone that its only orbital-class Starship launch site survived the ordeal is likely enough for it to consider the static fire a success. However, with the heat of 33 engines, SpaceX's Stage 0 definitely needs repair, or at least repainting, after being scorched. Leading up to Thursday, SpaceX had conducted a series of static fires, making use of an increasingly large number of engines. The previous static fire of 14 engines back in November of 2022 left the company's ground pad with some damage. We'll continue to test and learn, Shotwell said. I don't expect the pad to have the same issues because we've done some work on the pad. Here's hoping that we'll have a picture of the launch pad soon after the test. For the next steps, while the 31 engines that did ignite appeared to perform about as well as SpaceX could have hoped, the two engines missing from February 9th's historic Starship static fire have probably complicated the company's next steps. To be fully confident in Starship's ability to launch and fly a safe distance away from the launch site, SpaceX would likely need to complete a full 33-engine test. 
Meanwhile, Starship can't fly until the Federal Aviation Administration approves a launch license, and the FAA could be stodgy enough to deny SpaceX a license without a perfect 33-engine static fire. The company and the public have been waiting for the orbital flight test for well over a year. As Musk at one point suggested on his Twitter feed that the test would occur as early as July of 2021. Musk is very well known for suggesting timelines for his projects that don't pan out, though blowing past deadlines is a notorious issue for the aerospace industry at large. It should be noted that SpaceX is still awaiting a license from the FAA to move forward with an orbital flight test. When reached for comment on Thursday, Gwen Shotwell, the company's president and chief operating officer, shared the same statement it has been sharing for months. The FAA will make a license determination only after the agency is satisfied SpaceX meets all licensing, safety, and other regulatory requirements. Back in 2022, the FAA also gave SpaceX a list of 75 mitigating actions it needed to undertake for environmental approval. The Starship test program and the company's plans to launch out of its South Texas facilities, which are surrounded by wildlife reserves, has elicited fierce pushback from conservationists, as well as locals that have routinely lost access to a nearby public beach. There will always be work to do there, Shotwell said Wednesday, referring to the FAA licensing process. I think we'll be ready to fly right at the time frame that we get the license. Shotwell acknowledged the tendency to share unmet deadlines for launches in her remarks when discussing SpaceX's goal of getting the first Starship mission to Mars. We're so bad at guessing time frame. For sure, this decade, we will be landing people on the moon. For sure if not a few years from now, and then Mars, hopefully this decade? Maybe early next decade, 2030, Shotwell surmised. Let's try that, 2030. Shotwell previously said she hopes the company will conduct more than 100 orbital test flights of Starship before putting humans on board, as the company will need to do in order to help NASA carry out its moon landing with the Artemis 3 mission slated for 2025. I think that would be a great goal, Shotwell said Wednesday, when asked whether that target was still feasible. I don't think we will do 100 flights of Starship next year, but maybe in 2025, We'll do 100 flights. The Starship system is far different than anything SpaceX has flown before. The company has flown about 200 missions with its Falcon rockets, including trips that have sent military satellites and crews of astronauts to orbit, among other things. But Starship is far more powerful and designed for the specific purpose of venturing deeper into the solar system, such as to the Moon and Mars. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos like this. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.